Save the Rhinos has gotten in touch with me. They heard I was willing to be crucified. It might work out, though. First, I need to know exactly what they think my crucifixation will do for the cause. How it will save the Rhinos. Death by crucifixation. It's a noble, honorable death. With nails, that is, not with ropes. Usually they use ropes, not as good. You die of asphyxiation, with the air being cut off at the extremities. It's better to bleed to death, with asphyxiation running neck and neck. It's slower with blood loss. I got in a habit of asking my fortune teller how I'm gonna die. I'm supposed to be cut in half, somehow sliced. Only not front to back, but top to bottom, with the cut along the side. Recently, I was told I was gonna be I'm gonna die in a dark, murky pool of water. Only I don't know if I'm dead when I go in the water, or... I'm also supposed to be taken out. Like in a subway stabbing or something like that. Nobody thinks about it, but think. Each year, people celebrate their birthday, and their death day goes by completely unnoticed. Probably the second most important event of their life. So which do you want first? The bad news or the terrible news? Fun is making a comeback. Multitudes of fun seekers roam the streets on first Fridays, every Friday and Saturday, the weekend on this quest for fun. What is it about fun, really? What exactly is it? I usually don't even notice I'm having any until it's over. Quote, life consists of being born, crawling through open country under heavy fire, and dropping into your grave. So I've been to every state except for Alaska, wandering, bumbling around, getting lost, and sometimes found, but that's another story. Spalding Gray had this idea of the perfect moment. I saw Gray perform once in San Francisco. He was sitting at this round table with a glass of water and a Rolodex of index cards. He'd pick a topic, tell a story, and no matter what the story, it always came back to this idea, this quest. The perfect moment confounded me for years. This year, the EPA declared that coal ash is not hazardous waste. Coal ash, which contains arsenic and mercury, is now regular household garbage. It makes me think about death. Sorry. No problem. I think about death all the time. After humans wreck the planet to our own extinction, other species will survive or make a comeback. Mutate, evolve. Octopus. Octopus are adaptable and adept. Their tentacles rejuvenate. Octopuses. Nobody likes octopuses. I worry about the birds. I couldn't imagine a world without birds or bird songs. They were here first, you know. Scientists say rats will survive too. Rats are already taking over us. <clears throat> Scientists say they'll be as big as dinosaurs. Rats. Your rats, big rats. The uh, Egyptian movie theater was located on Market Street in downtown San Francisco. I saw that in the paper and went to apply because I was broke and figured it'd be an easy job and I'd get to see free movies. It uh, turned out to be a one-story on the dark side of the street with a rusted black marquee and an octagonal glass ticket booth on the outside, like space capsule, in the Tenderloin District, which was notorious for pimps, prostitutes, derelicts, transient hotels paper bag liquor stores and uh, porn shops. The inside of the theater was a long rectangle with worn out lumpy seats and garish lumpy carpet. I later found out the theater held 250, but it never sold out. The ceiling contained a gaping hole in the sky big enough for a skunk, or maybe even I could have fit through it. Uh, Spaghetti Western was playing. It's a weird place to work, but a job. I was running concessions one night by myself during the run of Jaws 2 when a couple came running into the lobby. The man was holding his hand up by the wrist. I saw something red. The woman was screaming, whimpering. He got bit! A rabbit and he got rabies! 
I, I, I was stunned. I, I figured we had Furman, but uh, well, Jim, the manager, was outside picking up litter and came running in and took one look at this guy's hand and started screaming at the couple to get the hell out or he called the cops. They uh, exchanged looks and the couple laughed, shouting about suing. The uh, Egyptian was, uh, I renamed it the fun terminal. Sometimes people looking for perfect moments or escape resort to making art. But serious drinkers call being drunk getting in the zone. People fill their quotas, sitting with drink and stogie in hand, all lit up, eyes a twinkle, wrapped in the cozy, boozy fuzziness, a wash in a sensation of a drinker's perfect moment. I start to get bored, especially when it becomes a marathon. False euphoria, phony goodwill, maudlin and sentimental, well, hangovers. Drinkers say, I like to drink. I don't get what people think is so great about being sober. Hey, no kidding. Yo, reality is sobering to say the least. In fact, excruciating. It can be. So what else is new? So what's your beef? Hey, here's another quote. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. A guy I know calls his favorite things the best fill in the blank on the planet. Anything on his best of list is the best on the planet. I tend to use it in reverse. The flip side, this is the worst blank on the planet. We get into a lot of fights. Well, it's really just one fight, an ongoing argument. We fight about the fun quota. I lobby for a reduction. He wants to maintain the status quo. I started drinking as a teenager. How many cans of beer could I drink before I puked? Getting shit-faced, wasted, bombed, this was the goal. Same with pot and drugs. In New York City, I wondered what it'd be like to not drink, not smoke. Life of a pill. I'm the most antisocial person I know. Well, actually, I know a few people more antisocial than I am. I, I usually cut out of places. I slip out the back when no one's looking. I never learned how to make entrances or exits. I was born shy. As a kid, my goal was to make myself invisible. Once, when we were little, my dad tried introducing us to one of his friends from work. I, I just stood there in a lineup with my sister, blank. My, my dad got mad. <laughs> well, say your name. Introduce yourself. What's wrong with you? I inadvertently succeeded in turning myself invisible, but I didn't know it. I had blended myself into the background. I, I didn't understand why people would bump into me on the street or, or sometimes walk over my foot or just skip me when things were getting passed out. I, I didn't make a fuss about it. I didn't want to be a sore loser and start waving my hands around and jumping up and down. If someone did a double take, I'd just say, oh, that's okay, I, I don't mind. Or I, I'd get left behind, cut off at the end of a sentence, no one noticing I was missing. I, I stopped trying to catch up, I'd just go home. But I wouldn't let people take my photo, that's where I drew the line. I, I didn't even want to try to manufacture a smile. I like the way people sit around here in their backyards and on their porches, and, and when you show up they say, hey so-and-so here, hi so-and-so. Because I, I don't have to come up with an opening line. Because I can never think of one. I, I used to try to make one up on my way to places, but I, I just fuck it up anyway. The worst is when it's my turn to tell a story. My, my, my stories are, well, when I do tell one and I get to the end, people just stare at me. <laughs> so uh, who's in the market for fun? Who's in the market for fun? So I taught high school in New York City public schools for years in gen ed and special education at the Bellevue Hospital for EDEH, Emotionally Handicapped Kids. They send me off site too, but mostly to, to uh, help out the younger kids. So I go outside the hospital to this elementary school. It's a group of six boys, overage EH second graders who can't read. They never learn somehow. The game they like to play is Pop Goes the Weasel to my, uh, <laughs> actually that's not right. 
They like to play musical chairs to my Pop Goes the Weasel cassette tape. They pop up and jump around and switch seats every time the tape goes, Pop Goes the Weasel. Anyhow, science is next on the list. The science teacher walks in and sits down at the table. All the kids are sitting in a U, and the paraprofessional is there too. She's this chubby lady who bullies and bribes the kids with snacks. Science guy says, so, we're gonna start a new unit today, and I wanna hear from you. What would you like to do if you had a choice? What would you like to learn about if you could choose? Now, I know that he's doing this because he doesn't have anything prepared. He's just bullshitting his way through the class, pretending to give the kids choices. So he goes around the room, asks each kid what he'd like to do. One kid goes, I'd like to do, uh, Planets are plants. The next kid goes, I'm thinking. Lamar is next. Lamar is this kid with thick glasses. He takes medication two times a day. He's always staring off into space. Mr. Science says, says Lamar, what would you like to do? Uh, I want to go home. <laughs> Mr. Science shoots me this dirty look. And the paraprofessional bellows at the kids for order. Then he turns to Jamal. He says, Jamal, what would you like to do? I don't know. Insects, maybe? Or... The kids are all silent. They're thinking hard about what they'd like to do. Mr. Science says, let's do shapes. Let's start our unit on shapes. Jamal's shoot, hand shoots up into the air. Uh, Jamal? No. We are not going to do shapes. We've done shapes. This year, last year, we know shapes. We know all about them. You have your circle. Triangles, rectangles, and squares. Squares, we already know. A million times. No more shapes. Anything but shapes. Not ever, not again. So what do they end up doing? When I come back into the room, the kids are all silent and serious, working on When I was a kid, my family moved. I didn't want to move. My dad got a job working at the Sears Tower in Chicago, so we moved. My oldest sister already knew better. The new place wasn't going to be any better or worse than the old homestead. Badgerland, go Badgers! At my new school, I was sent to a room near the principal's office where a man in a suit and tie asked tons of questions for days. Most made no sense, but I got out of class. My teacher was a battle ax. One day the man asked who should be saved first in a sinking ship. Me, I said. I could tell by his face this was the wrong answer, so I bugged him for the right answer. Women and children. I didn't get it. Why? Perpetuation of the species. I'd never heard of it. Quote, love is nature's delusion in the interest of the perpetuation of the species. Schopenhauer. Another quote? Kafka, couriers. They had the choice of being kings or the couriers of kings. Therefore, but I passed the test. That's when they came clean, said I'd had a psych evaluation. <clears throat> they were relieved. Everyone was relieved except me. I was mad. Why didn't they just ask me how I was? All I remember is walking to school every day alone. I didn't have any friends. Illinois. We weren't even in Chicago. It wasn't even windy. We were on the outskirts in some suburb. Didn't look like anything. Landlocked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Badgers. Oh, the Badgers. They're everywhere. You walk into a bank, the Badger doesn't want to cash a check. You turn on the TV, it's the Badgers. It's the Badger Game Show. I walk into a, t I walk into a store, I want a t-shirt, I want a medium. They only have large and extra large. 
Badgers. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. You know, see, I'm working on acceptance. I'm working on letting go. I don't need no stinking badgers. Another day, another fight with my friend. A name calling. Blah, blah. You have such a chip on your shoulder. Loser. Loser. You're such a pill. In my opponent's book, being a pill is the worst you can be. A cardinal sin. It kills me, but I don't mind. Life is all about fun having fun. You just don't know it yet, he informs me. On the one hand, I disagree completely with what he calls fun. I had this New York moment a while back, a light bulb moment. Fun is overrated, and so is being happy. On the other hand, maybe he knows how to have a good time. He grew up having fun. His house is party central. Party! There were a million kids in his household. It was a madhouse. His mom would yell upstairs, boys, clean your rooms! And they'd all climb out the windows. They'd sit around at night, cracking jokes, seeing who could be the funniest. One thing he says about my family is we had fun. My family was not fun. Fun was not on the roster. You see, it's, uh, it's about control. It's about these trashy little badgerinis. These, these trashy little badgerinis, they take you into places that you don't want to go, into dark spaces, black holes. I walk down the street, I get hot, wet. I know, it's a badger. And I know, I'll wake up in the morning and I'll start puking and I'll start getting real sick and weird things will start crawling out of my fingernails and toenails, but it's okay. It's okay, I've let them in. I've let them in. I've let them in. <clears throat> I tried. I tried out for cheerleaders. I knew all the tricks, all the jumps, even the back one. But it was rigged. I got cut on the first round. Everybody knew but me. I try to be happy for the winners. I fake to being glad and liking things that, you know, that's school. I pretended that mediocre things were, you know, really awesome. When we first moved, I was deposited with this Christian family, friends of my friend, uh, parents, <sighs> so that I wouldn't miss any school uh, during the move. I stayed with these two dorks, Scotty, Robbie, Bobby, Mueller, Miller, complete nerds. We played tackle football. I'd charge him like a bull and get trumped, but I pretended to like it. That summer, we went on a family vacation to Paducah, Kentucky. We stayed at this weird resort. There were cabins and beds and zillions of kids, and we went swimming, water skiing. My sister's suit broke. The strap snapped while she was skiing. She refused to get out of the water. I kept on water skiing, playing the daredevil. Yeah. I dove off this 20 foot platform so that anybody watching would think I was like evil Knievel. My skull practically cracked when I hit the water. I had a headache for over an hour, but I pretended it didn't hurt, that it was fun. Oh. I'm gonna do it again. I wanna do it again. We drove to Paducah. We drove forever. And my oldest sister was driving and my dad was screaming at her the whole time. Hi, I'm a badger. And I'm powerless over the badgers and my life has become unmanageable. And I've come to believe in a power lesser than myself. The badgers. Now, I'm not saying I'm the man for the job, but what we need is a visionary, like, like an earthquake, like an earthquake ubermensch, to exterminate these mindfuck lugubrious luscious mindfuck termites called uh, the Badgers. <laughs> the Badgers, because there are real, real Badgers, and there are fake Badgers, and there are these Badgers on the borderline of reality and fantasy. And I can't tell the difference between the real badgers and the big badgers. It's shit city synchronicity. This is shit city. What did you expect? 
I love to fuck the badgers. I'm in one with fuck the badgers. A slippery slope. Another quote? No. The friend, the one who likes to get in the fights, his idea of a good time is to drive around Casey neighborhoods looking at old trucks. He makes the rounds and checks on them. He leaves notes for the owners under the windshield seeing if they want to sell. They never do. Why are we going this way? Oh, I get it, to drive past another truck you want that's not for sale. He likes to point out where his friends used to live. Oh, there's a house where my buddy so-and-so lived. He committed suicide. There's another house in this neighborhood. A guy I know lived out on his green porch. He committed suicide too. No, wait, he was murdered. I don't want to see a bunch of houses of people I don't know, have never met, or who are dead. He only likes movies and TV shows from the 50s or earlier. We've actually sat at my house on my bed watching Leave it to Beaver and John Wayne movies. I hated Wayne as a kid and have no interest. His movies were on all the time. They never went off. Duke of reruns. And his acting reminded me of a wooden board. But my friend can watch these over and over, all while snacking, as he calls it, a non-stop eating marathon that lasts eight hours. <laughs> Peanut M&M's, movie size bag, budget tortilla chips, pistachios, ice cream bars, red and black licorice, a head of lettuce, a Costco chicken, popcorn, peanuts, Cracker Jacks, and his signature grape drink, ocean spray cran grape or grape orange soda, and ice. It all tastes like popsicles to me. And he refills his tumbler with ice every hour or so. I like to chew on ice, he says. He uses phrases from the 1950s too. Cute as a button. Let a smile be your umbrella. Am I making fun of my friend? Six more months and then I can uh, stop all this groveling. Maybe then I can stop. I just wish I could stop all this groveling. It's possible. Maybe there'll be a sign. <laughs> 